Now that we know how to differentiate the normal and abnormal abdominal arteries and veins by image, let's take a look at the normal arterial and venous hemodynamics for each of the visceral vascular systems. As we discuss each of the circulatory systems of the abdomen, we'll point out the importance of recognizing key features of the examination, such as the normal vascular resistance patterns of the organs supplied by each vessel, changes in the vascular resistance and Doppler velocity waveforms that occur following ingestion of a meal, and the normal direction of flow in each vessel. Attention to these features can assist in recognizing the presence of disease in the visceral vessels. We must first remember that the inferior vena cava is the large vein that drains the visceral organs and as such is a low velocity compressible vein. Near the heart, the spectral waveforms will be complex as they are affected by variations in intra-abdominal pressure associated with respiration and regurgitation of blood from the right atrium during atrial systole. As we sample with the Doppler in the mid to distal inferior vena cava, the flow pattern will become phasic, typical of the flow pattern seen in the peripheral veins. If flow in the inferior vena cava is obstructed, the examiner should note the characteristic features of venous obstructive disease. Remember, these are non-compressibility, echogenic material within the lumen of the vein, dilation of the vein, monophasic or no flow, and absence of response to valsalva maneuver. The hepatic veins drain the liver running between the hepatic segments and empty into the inferior vena cava. There are typically three major hepatic branches, the right, middle, and left hepatic veins. The characteristic hepatic venous flow pattern is similar to the vena cava and reflects the changes caused by variation in the respiratory and cardiac cycles. You may note the systolic reversal of flow in the hepatic veins. This is due to the contraction of the right atrium of the heart. If the hepatic veins are thrombosed, several diagnostic features may be present. Dilation of the veins, thickening of the vein walls, a typical vein course, extrahepatic anastomoses or collaterals, echogenic material within the lumen of the vein. In cases of hepatic venous thrombosis, the characteristic triphasic waveform will change from pulsatile to monophasic flow. There may be no flow if one or more of the major hepatic veins is obstructed. Because the hepatic veins have such a characteristic waveform, it is easy to recognize major flow changes in these vessels. Remember, in contrast to the hepatic veins which carry blood away from the liver, the portal vein supplies the organ with oxygen-rich blood. A normal portal venous waveform is characterized by continuous mildly turbulent flow with low peak and mean velocities. Flow will normally increase during expiration and decrease with inspiration. As the changes in intra-abdominal pressure that occur with respiration are transmitted through the liver to the portal veins, the examiner may note an undulating flow pattern. Having the patient hold their breath at the end of expiration can minimize large respiratory excursions in the portal venous waveforms. This maneuver becomes extremely important when trying to determine the direction of flow in the portal veins. Abnormal hemodynamics encountered in the extra and intrahepatic portal veins with obstruction to inflow to the liver include absence of flow, abnormal direction of flow, hepatofugal or away from the liver, reduced velocity and volume flow, to and fro flow patterns, pulsatile flow, and lack of respiratory variation. Note in this example that the portal venous flow is directed away from the liver and the Doppler waveform has lost phasicity. 
Portal venous hypertension may result from severe hepatic disease. In such cases, the following B-mode image characteristics may apply. Portal vein diameter may be greater than 13 millimeters, measured in the supine position during quiet respiration. Less than 20% increase in splenic or superior mesenteric vein diameter from quiet to deep inspiration. Development of large collaterals between the portal and systemic circulation. Hepatofugal flow and splenomegaly. The splenic and superior mesenteric vein should be assessed routinely to determine normal phasicity of flow, direction of flow, diameter of the vessels, and the absence of intraluminal echoes.